All right. So first, and sometimes I use even a paper bag, but we have paper plates because they like to make noise. Now, remember, we're not going to do rhythm right now. Rhythm is an irregular beat. So... There's a lot of research behind the signs of movement, music, steady beat, and also the points vary the correlation between that and academic achievement. And today we have a super hands-on podcast slash workshop on how to bring the steady party, steady beat party, into your home and of course a regular of this podcast dr debbie mitchell thank you thank you i'm so uh, excited to be i'm here ready today. for the party because i'm seeing all the th stuff that you brought and i can't wait okay so the topic is steady beat what is steady beat steady beat is the underlying beat that you hear in music it's a steady it's similar increments of time but also if you see windshield wipers there is a steady beat you breathe to a steady beat. Your heart beats to a steady beat. So steady beat is that underlying beat that you hear underneath the music as well as other things in your life. That's a pretty particular passion and topic to pursue. Um, to write a dissertation and your doctorate on this, why steady beat? Well, because I was a different kind of learner. I was a kinesthetic learner. And I always had steady beat. And, you know, I started reading more about steady beat and the way that I learned and realized that it really enhances academics. So in my dissertation, I work with first graders. I saw who could keep a steady beat, and it correlated to those that were performing better in math and in reading. So that got me very interested. Okay, well, let's go back. Okay, so steady beat, when does it start? It starts really in the womb. So things, let's talk about things you can do. Things for young children before they even are cognizant of young, uh, of their steady beat. What can you do with those young children? Rocking them. If you have a rocking chair, that's usually a steady beat. You can also, if you see a parent when they're standing, they're rocking the child back and forth. That is steady beat. Patting them on the back to steady beat, especially if you start adding music then. And you're keeping the steady beat to music tapping on their legs to steady beat. All of those things when they're young or even in the womb can help develop that feeling of steady beat. Have you ever gone to a dance or let's say even aerobic class and you could visually see that one person was off beat? Well, I would probably be that person. <laughs> And uh, there's no more aerobic class, but back in the day, I was I I would still be that person. Uh, but 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 okay. So there are people that are not natural with beat. What why what are what is wrong they with us? Didn't get the foundational skills. They didn't get it as a young child, and it's harder as they get older to develop that. That's why it's so important to have a young child have that feeling of steady beat and repeat various things that they can do, which is why I brought all these manipulatives so that we can show things that you can do at home with things that you have at home, how to build steady beat. Okay, well, I, I need it for myself, so let's do it. All right, so first, and sometimes I use even a paper bag, but we have paper plates because they like to make noise. Now, remember, we're not gonna do rhythm right now. Rhythm is an irregular beat. So steady beat would be like this. Go ahead, Marnie. Irregular beat would be, okay. see, that's not steady, that's irregular. Mm -hmm. So with my child, my young child, and remember they have a short attention span, so you have to change frequently. Copy me as soon as I finish. Different speeds, right? Different speed. so good oh you have God. steady beat and that's that's fun for kids too it's fun and if you have the, the paper bag out it makes even more noise because they like the reinforcement of the noise that actually sends a signal to their brain okay so, but this type of exercises when can parents start it as soon as they're able to it, and now realize i kept only to five beats when they're younger, you're gonna do one, two, three beats. As they get that, then you can increase beats. So you could do this with a toddler. They might even go, you know, and every time you do it, they're gonna, and then maybe you add to two. 
and see if they can do one, two. And the other thing is you can also count. So it's reinforcing the mouth. So I might go, one, two, your turn. Okay, one, two. And you can then also add music. So all of these things are reinforcing it. Now, I've been using my hands. Now you want an extension of your hands, and this also keeps their interest. So we're going to use our handy-dandy rhythm sticks. Grab your rhythm stick. Okay. Now, real rhythm sticks are usually wood or plastic, so these are rolled-up paper bags. These are things you can find at home. Find at home, yeah. and these aren't going to be harmful. They're not going to hit their brother or sister or you with them. Uh -huh. Or if, if they do, it's not going to hurt. So now we're going to do an extension. Great job. Okay. That is awesome. So while you're doing this with your child, they're learning speed, but also what are the benefits of this type of activities? Well, mathematically, they're learning a pattern. They're learning repetition. They're also listening to the difference in the speed, which is making a difference in their brain. And it helps them to also problem solve. Now, the hardest one for you was when you had to wait. It's a good way to teach children to wait. Great. So, and um, besides math, what are other areas that? We're working socially because you're having to follow me. So you're helping that area of the social development. We're also, because your speech is in a pattern, which later we will get to rhythm, you're also going to help their language. So you're, you're helping in many, many different areas. Now, because children have short attention spans, we can also use bean bags. Okay. And we can just change it up. Okay. Okay. Then we could go to teaching body parts. And body parts are part of your language. So I can go head, head, head. Your turn. Head, head, head. Shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. Shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. How about Head, shoulder, head, shoulder. Head, shoulder, head. That's fun. See? And I you can, can go to your good. toes, your yeah. knees, your back. You can go to all these different areas. So now, in addition to steady beat, using a manipulative, you're also teaching the body parts. Very good. You're, you're like in, incorporate all this learning experience while teaching steady beat. Steady beat. The other thing you can do is now I have an independent thing. I can do it here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Wide together, wide together. Wide together, wide together. And I'm still in all of that doing steady beat. Now, the other thing you can do is take your paper plates. I love this. This is like a demonstration podcast. You can I have just love fun it. with it. Just some yeah. simple paper plates. Now, yeah, we're doing steady beat. Now, I could be doing this to music and keeping yeah. the beat. How about this? So they're hearing different sounds. They could they're, do it again, the wide yeah. together, wide together. How about tapping on our knees? Yeah. How about our heads? That's awesome. Okay. And kids like to imitate you. Yeah. It's fun. And then I can let you be the leader, Marnie. What are we going to do? Okay. Oh, yes. Show me. What are we gonna do, Marnie? Okay. I'm putting you on the spot. I like I, I like you, you like the, the body parts with the sticks. Head, 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 shoulder, shoulder, the other shoulder, other shoulder. <laughs> See how much? But yeah, so it's leadership too. It's, it's a, a lot. We of, are laughing. Uh, we are having a great time. We're reinforcing so many academic skills. Now, once they do get steady beat. Then you could go into a rhythm pattern like, but that's after. After when is the a child ready for to learn rhythm? So first comes a steady beat. Usually, children by four, by the end of four, have steady beat. If you have reinforced it, after mm -hmm. they have steady beat, then your very simple rhythm patterns, because skipping is a rhythm rhythmical pattern. So is galloping while running, walking jumping, hopping, or more steady beat. Jump rope is a steady beat. Those things reinforce steady beat, but also nursery rhymes. For example, let's think of, um, let me think of one really quick. Uh, uh, let's see. Twinkle, twinkle. 
twinkle, twinkle, little star, instead of twinkle, twinkle, little uh -huh. star. That's a rhythmical pattern. If you go twinkle, twinkle, little star, then mm -hmm. you're doing basic timing, timing and steady beat. Yes. So, so really I, you know what I love about this experience that it, it requires the parent to be immersive in the moment. So you have to be mindful. And that's what children need nowadays. They just need, while you're going through these experiences with your child, you disconnect from the entire world. You're just immersed in that experience of teaching your little one the power of steady beat and and they're enjoying it's like a game to them and a lot of times even when i'm someplace where you can't have these things i can use my hands can you clap can you tap your knees can you snap but i am so interested you know like a lot of um kids are natural with with steady beat with my husband to just to mention one it, like since he was a little boy, he was in church. He was a drummer. Mm -hmm. Like um, so, kids like that have more tendency. Do you see them exceed in some areas, like math, or not necessarily? They typically will. Some sometimes they learn to compensate just because of their natural growth and development. But it is easier if they have those skills because it set the foundation in the brain, and that's what you want to have is that foundation. So it builds like the, a, a very strong foundation, the beat for math and for, for literacy. For literacy too. And of course, music, that's a given. It's gonna reinforce your music skills. And w what is the correlation? Because I've always heard um, that musically inclined children or children that, that practice music instruments perform very well in school. Mainly the math part, because notes are math. When you're a half note or a whole note, a whole note is four beats, a half note is two beats, a quarter beat, one beat. So they have to understand the sequencing, they have to understand the math, and so that builds those skills mm -hmm. that are needed for math and problem solving. Yeah. Well, you know the weird thing? This is becoming, you're becoming like my counselor now. I was really good with music and math, but my my body movements, I'm, I'm, I'm the one in the aerobic class, like that goes the opposite direction. So is it, why is that? It's like that, that part, uh, like we don't reinforce you, one area? You didn't have enough experience with the movement part. Yeah. So the movement that. part, you have to realize that a lot of that is fine motor, mm -hmm. but you must not have gotten it with the gross motor. And oh, that's why I we think. start with the gross motor. And so oh. for you, the easiest thing would be to do things like march to the beat of the music. Mm -hmm. Get that down. Clap to the beat of the music. You have to build that foundation of skills that perhaps you missed. No, I definitely miss some of them, like the large motor. So, but the, the good thing is that new parents have all this knowledge and information from research that you have to, the, that, that there's so many areas that, that you can um, a, a stimulate or, or, or practice the type, this type of exercise and large motor skills, fine motor skills. All these experiences have to be embedded into the daily routines. And just even to mention the extension, Children first use just their hands. That's why it takes a while for them to understand how to use a fork, how to do those things. If they're gonna play sports that have a racket, that's why they usually start with a shorter racket, then go to a longer racket. But even a tennis swing has a pattern to it. Anything you do in life, driving a car, you have a pattern to it. So if you can build these basic skills, it will help them in so many areas of their life. And how many minutes a day? It doesn't have to be that yeah. long, but it's the main thing is to keep their interest. If they start losing interest, they're not going to enjoy it the next time. So I always stop when they're having fun. Oh, oh that's it's time mean. to stop. <laughs> we'll do some more later. <laughs> and you can tell, but changing just your implements, the things that you're using, going to bean bags. Oh, and we didn't even do our cups. Oh, I was oh, I was wondering what we, is that? What are the cups? This is for? just an extension. Yeah. I can do it on the flat side. Yeah. I can do it on the a table. Yeah. I can do it on my body parts. And they can listen to different types of sound. It gives them different types of sound. This is a very educational, hands-on podcast today. I love that. So yes, because I think we've always said and talk, but this time you brought this props, and actually we are demonstrating things that parents can do at home. And this actually correlates with another of our segments, which is looking at the movement chart. I think parents need to be more aware how important 
movement in all aspects are for children's yes normal growth and development especially in this day and age where it's more sedentary kids are sitting in front of the screens in 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 their seats for longer periods of time we're becoming more isolated but that's a whole new episode it certainly all the racing innovators anything else to wrap up this very handsome demonstration i just want parents to be creative as you can see we use all kinds of things that you find around the house you probably can think of even more and challenge your child to think of things what else could we use to keep steady beat and let everyone enjoy it make it a family affair yeah a competition i love that there's so many challenges that parents can do definitely to incorporate rhythm into daily life so if you like this this is a work of love the racing innovators podcast so many um, people just come and share their expertise like our dr debbie mitchell and the goal of this podcast is to bring that educational experience that you can bring to your home to raise the next generation of innovator this simple tools activities demonstrations that moment of mindfulness can change the rest of your child's definitely life. so thank you so much for tuning in and if you enjoy this podcast please like subscribe to the podcast share with another parent that you had you saw dr mitchell on this podcast and that she had a great tip on how to incorporate steady beat and just send them the link Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode of Racing Innovators.